This is my Jack Wolf Knives Sharpshooter Jack, designed by owner operator of Jack Wolf Knives, Ben Belkin, and the first knife to come out uh, from his company. Uh, he's been working on this company for about a year and a half. We've talked a lot about it on Thursday Night Knives, and we've talked a lot about it on uh, the podcast and uh, also in person. And it's so cool to see these things finally hitting the market. Uh, ben is a master entrepreneur and, uh, well, he certainly is after the experience of getting these to market before bringing these to market, he had his, <clears throat> he had his, uh, toes in a lot of different kind of businesses, but his passion has always been slip joint knives. And you can tell in how he distilled some of his favorite and the best qualities, uh, from slip joint knives and put them into his modern interpretations of classic slip joint designs. This is the first one out. He's gonna be releasing one per month over the next six months, I believe he said. Uh, check out the podcast up this week uh, with him. We're talk we talk all about the creation of this knife and the creation of the company Jack Wolf Knives. And um, man, what a pleasure it is to have this in hand and what an honor to have received a, an advanced copy, uh, like a number of my favorite YouTubers and trusted voices here. Um, ben uh, sent these out and got them in the hands of people who would really appreciate them and be able to uh, analyze them and give you all the details. So let me tell you about my take of this knife. You've probably seen most of the videos out right now talking about this knife, but uh, playing very against type, I opted for this um, beautiful dark matter blue fat carbon. Uh, I usually talk about how much I'm not a fan of carbon fiber, but uh, lately, more than not, I've been liking carbon fiber. I'm just not crazy about the regular weave, basket weave stuff we saw for the first, I don't know, 10 years of carbon fiber. I'm loving these sort of marbled and shred carbon fibers, and this fat stuff looks cool. And I have to say, on a modern interpretation of such a classic slip joint, I thought it only fitting to get this beautiful modern material that looks right at home on a slip joint, by the way. It reminds me of a lot of the acrylics from the 50s and 60s and 70s that you saw on slip joint knives. And also, it it's not dissimilar to some kind of bones, uh, the way some sort of bone covers might be dyed. So this is an ultra modern material, uh, nestled in another ultra modern material, but all in the service of this beautiful uh, traditional style slip joint knife. So I think Ben really, really knocked it out of the park. And um, I'm not one to use sports analogies, uh, but he did indeed knock this out of the park. And you can really see his love of slip joint knives here. Now, if you don't know Ben Belkin, uh, check him out, watch him on my podcast or watch him elsewhere. He's been on a lot of different shows and um, he has got an amazing collection of custom slip joint knives. And uh, these, these are the knives that really inspired uh, this one and all of the others. And the qualities, uh, the attributes of not only performance, but of build, fit, finish, tolerance, and all of that, that those custom slip joints exhibited he wanted to put into these production knives. Uh, these were initially prototyped, and you, if you were at Blade Show 20, <clears throat> 2021, you probably saw a whole bunch of prototypes for six different models uh, that he had. <clears throat> Those were all done by Riot. In the years since, um, uh, production schedules and all that sort of got in the way of it being Riot. He took this to a different outfit, who he's uh, contractually uh, unable to reveal, and you'd never know that it wasn't Riyadh. These are so exquisitely built. And I am no connoisseur of slip joints like Ben, but you know, I have a pretty decent uh, collection of Great Eastern Cutlery knives, and I think they do an incredible job at things that slip joint guys like, like walk and talk. That's uh, how it moves in and out, and the sound it makes, the walk in and the talk. Uh, the sound it makes. So the walk and talk here, he just nailed. And uh, a good walk and talk, meaning has a nice 
uh, snappy sound and and uh, a and, uh, a corresponding tight action on the open, the half stop, and the close. Well, you know that you've got a knife, a slip joint knife that has a pretty stout spring, and is not going to give you too much uh, worry about in terms of closing. Now, I, when you're cutting, you're going against the lock. So there's very little reason why a slip joint knife, if used appropriately for the right job, is ever going to close on your finger. But it's a thing to think about, and uh, maybe it's even just psychological, but the fact that this has a nice stout spring at about, I would say, a seven and a half or eight uh, in terms of pull. Um, oftentimes, slip joint people measure the tension of the, of the pull uh, in a one to 10 scale, one being low, 10 being high. To me, this is absolutely perfectly desirable at a seven and a half or eight. Uh, 10 is breaking your fingers, nine is just unpleasant. Uh, this is just solid and um, I'm gonna say it, it's perfect. It's got perfect action for a slip joint. What also it has that's perfect for a slip joint is uh, the corresponding fit for that action. So the uh, lock spring here, or not the lock spring, the spring here, the slip joint spring here is 100% flush with the integral titanium liners it sits between. We'll talk about those liners in a second. Um, when it's closed, it's totally flush. When it's at the half stop, totally flush. And that's a slip joint nerd thing. And then it serves no real purpose, but it's just a fit thing, a design thing. And then when it's open, it's fully, fully flat and perfect. So uh, I know that Ben is a, an absolute stickler for the performance, for the action of a slip joint knife. And I can, oh, I, he corroborated this, but I could only imagine before that, that there was a lot of back and forth with the manufacturers about getting the action just right. And boy, oh boy, did they get it just right. All right, this is made of M390 blade steel, which is perfect to have this really hard steel for a little EDC knife. Uh, it, it's fully hollow ground, that's right. That's a full hollow grind, which is really cool. You can, you can kind of see it if you do that, or you can just see it in how the light plays on it. So it is incredibly slicey. You could uh, sharpen this knife if you were to use this really hard for a really long time. You could sharpen it all the way up to the peak of that sharpening notch, and it still feels really thin at that portion. You could still have a very, very usable and slicey blade, even if you sharpened it all the way up there. Very, very thin behind the edge. I think he said 15 thousandths. Um, I think that's what he said. I certainly have not measured it. Uh, but just ground to cut to slice. This is a high performance blade. And I love the idea of super steels on smaller EDC blades because you could have this, I probably will have this its entire life or my entire life and never have to sharpen it. I might noodle around with it and strop it just for fun and gratification. But with M390, a great geometry and great edge, I'll probably never need to need to sharpen this. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the construction here. This is, these, I said integral bolsters. That means, or integral liners and bolsters. That means these titanium liners and the bolsters are just one piece. So the bolster is, uh, the bolster slash liner is created. This pocket is milled out into which the cover goes. Uh, call them covers in the slip joint world, not scales. And uh, they're fluted and way more solid and rigid. The, the uh, ordinary way to do it, the production way to do it is to solder that bolster onto the liner, like you see here on this case knife. Um, <clears throat> this being integral makes it much more rigid and, and much more um, 
how, what do you want to call it? Uh, durable, durable to dropping, durable to all sorts of stuff. I mean, I've never had a, uh, that's not true. I have had bolsters pop off. It's not frequent. Uh, and I don't think it was a case knife, but in any case, they can pop off because they're not, they're not really uh, a, a singular piece at all. This is, and then just look at the simplicity of this. Two pieces of titanium, two pieces of carbon fiber, and that spring, and then the blade. And of course you have the hardware. Um, if you remove these scales, uh, like kind of like an old school uh, uh, custom knife, you remove those scales and underneath, you'll see body screws. And that's how you can take it apart. I I like to take apart knives sometimes, but I'm not uh, one of these guys who has to take something apart. And I'm not going to, <laughs> I'm not going to, but it's cool that you can, and it's cool that you can adjust the pivot and, um, and all of that. Uh, and one thing that I really like about this is it's very cool uh, that you can take full advantage of the ergonomics of this gun stock handle. It's called a gun stock handle, yes, because that looks like a rifle stock, especially like an old lever action. That's what I always see. Uh, Ben's version, he's tweaked it slightly. He's put a little curve there uh, for for fingers to, to fall into a little nicer um, and a little bit of a curve in the back here. It's very ergonomic. You're, you're uh, between these two fingers, the middle finger and the, and the ring finger, that little area fits perfectly for great control. This is uh, a traditional handle pattern that I believe always merits a single blade jackknife because here I have, here I'll show, bring in some knives for comparison. I have this lovely and gorgeous um, number 44 gunstock jack from um, Great Eastern Cutlery. And here I'm gonna use the Jack Wolf knives Aluminum tin? No. Are you gonna use that super cool pog, which you just learned about what a pog is? No. Are you gonna use the sticker in there? No. You're gonna use this. I'm gonna use this towel that comes with it. That's just my way of showing all the cool stuff you get with this knife. It comes wrapped up in this beautiful microfiber cloth, which I just sliced a little bit because this is super sharp. Uh, and it came with a sticker, a pog, and this beautiful um, leather slip, by the way which is starting to take on the patina. I've been carrying this every day. Uh, but here, the thing I wanted to show is that this is a very, very nice gun stock jack, but it's a two-bladed jack and you don't get to ever take advantage of the ergonomics that are endemic to this design. You know, the whole point of this design uh, in the handle is that. Um, same, uh, same as you get here, except here, there's no blade, uh, obscuring this shape. Like you're never going to use this knife with both blades open, but you might just use the pen blade. And when you do, you have this whole big spine of the clip point, which is, that's not altogether uncomfortable, but you're not getting that gun stock ergonomics and same, same here. It, it's rounding it off again, not uncomfortable. But what's the point of making a gun stock if you're not ever able to actually interface with that, um, with that uh, ergonomic feature? Okay, so just as uh, comparison sake, there it is with the Great Eastern Cutlery 44. This is just a hair under three inches uh, in, um, in blade length and overall, uh, I know you say, why that? One, two, three, four, five, uh, like six and three quarters inches long. Now I know that, that in designing his knives, he's keeping to some very traditional uh, lengths. And in, with these kind of pocket knives, they usually measure them by open length of the primary blade. Uh, so here it is with, let me show you with a very, very common slip joint knife. I mean, you can get these everywhere. This is the Case Trapper, double-edged, double-bladed Trapper. Probably, I don't know, this is totally anecdotal for me, but probably the most common slip joint out there, period. Um, maybe not in this configuration, and maybe not even necessarily case, uh, but it seems like every everybody makes one of these in this size, and it's fairly large. So there it is with the classic. Here, another GEC here. This is 
the number 47, one I chased for years, and then uh, through the through the kindness of Mike Latham, got this uh, on the last drop. This is a factory second, but look at that beautiful purple bone scale or uh, cover there, just beautiful. So there it is. They are very similar in size. Still, the Viper takes it just ever so slightly in length. Now, here it is with the Classic. I know, I'm pretty sure, I might be mistaken now. I thought that maybe this was the size that Ben prefers uh, best of all, which is the number 15 boys knife. And uh, it's just a really great size for throwing in a slip or throwing in your pocket. It's like two and three quarter inches long. Uh, that way, this is just a beautiful one. I have three number 15s and I prize them. Um, great size. And this is just a little bit larger. By the way, have I mentioned how beautiful I think the clip point blade is on this Jack Wolf Knives Sharpshooter? I think it is positively stunning. Uh, not just the blade shape and that beautiful swedge, but that hollow grind, that machine satin. It's just a beautiful blade. Uh, two more knives I want to show it off with. This one also a beautiful blade, but in a different way. Uh, I love this because it reminds me of the old Spanish Navaja. Or, yeah, Navaja. This is the Lion Steel um, Goody Van Poppel's designed Gitano. And that's a single bladed jack, a bit larger with a clip, you know, and everything is a little bit different. It's a lot less traditional, even though it's kind of based on a traditional uh, profile. But Goody Von Poppel, you got to follow him on uh, Instagram. He makes locking, folding versions of this knife larger, very ornate. They're incredibly beautiful knives. Okay, and lastly, I want to show it with this Medford Gentleman Jack, a knife that um, has some similar qualities and some things that I love about it. And then a few things, uh, or one in particular, that uh, as, a, as a slip joint knife, it just needs work. Um, here it is. Oh, I'm surprised. This is the first time I'm seeing them together. And, uh, that gentleman Jack is a bit larger. Uh, this one, like the Jack Wolf Knives Sharpshooter, is hollow ground and has a very nice hollow grind. Um, very nice blade. Uh, and I like the handle, very neutral and everything, and that's titanium, so it's got this, uh, modern materials on an old mechanism. Not a very old looking design or traditional design, but um, the the problem with this is the walk and talk. Uh, I think it just, it's, you know, it's uh, very lackluster. You do have a uh, a flush lock, uh, lock bar there, but it's just, you know, it, that should be snapping to the half stop and then snapping shut. So, you know, Medford knives, they make incredible knives, but, um, you know, this is not their métier, at least it wasn't when they made this one. So um, I'm sure they've grown and, and such. This was one of the very early ones. Um, so, but this video is about this knife. Uh, dropping on Friday, April 15th, the traditional tax day, even though this year it's the Monday the 18th. Just so you know, you got the weekend. Uh, dropping on Friday the 15th. That might be today. That might be tomorrow. Uh, but keep your eyes peeled because these things are going to fly off the shelf. Uh, a lot of your favorite YouTubers have already reviewed this knife. And so you've heard everyone. It's pretty uh, unanimous. This is an outstanding knife. If you have any inkling to get into slip joints or if you're a slip joint lover, uh, either way, run, don't walk and uh, be sure you get in on this. And then look out for each month. He's gonna be releasing others. They are made and they are in the process. So um, keep your eyes peeled on Jack Wolf Knives. Uh, thanks a lot for watching guys and uh, I'll talk to you soon.